This is one of my favorite texts that uh, I have been just bubbling over with since I was a youth. I, I, I love this passage in a very special way because it is so relevant. It's taken from Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. Let us pray as I go into the word. Father God, here we are today. We want to hear a word from you. We want to be inspired. We want to be motivated. We want to be better prepared and ready for the day when you shall come. Oh God, I pray that you will place this word deep within our hearts and that we will leave here today rejoicing because you are God, you are God alone, you are our God, and you will never leave us nor forsake us. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory, everybody say his glory, his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the nations shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy shining. I'd like to put a tag in this text today, and I have one word for this congregation the word is shine. Shine. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and just say shine? In spite of what you're going through, shine. In spite of your troubles, shine. In spite of how you feel like life is not going your way, shine. Shine. Hallelujah. It's time to shine. My brothers and sisters, we live in a dark, dismal and despicable age. It is an age when the crippling and corroding epidemic of sin seem to envelop all of society. There's surely a time when the bewildered masses of earth are groping blindly in the darkness of misery and despair. And in this decadent society, it seemed bent on destruction and devastation. Instead of mankind turning to God for help and deliverance, many are comfortable living in corruption and confusion, while others have saturated, saturated their lives with the diabolical and deadly habits of sinful indulgence. In this day and time, it would appear that godly ethics have evaporated. Christian values have vanished. Traditional morals have been moved. The God's law have been overlooked, overturned, and overrun, and fundamental truth seem to have traveled to a distant and deserted land. As a consequence, immorality, indecency, and iniquity continues to spread like wildfires, scorching and torturing everything in its gnawing path. Everywhere there is darkness, from the city to the suburb, darkness, from the White House to the State House, there's darkness, from Wall Street to Main Street, it's dark. It's so dark that it's darker than a hundred midnight in a Cypress Valley. But my brothers and sisters, my 
message today in capsule form is that God is looking for somebody. Somebody with a made up mind to make a difference in this dark world and let the entire world know that light has come, that light is available, and God is looking for somebody to shine. He's looking for some able-bodied, missionary-minded, church-loving, truth-seeking, Christ-minded individuals who are willing to take a stand for the gospel and let their light shine in this world of darkness. My brothers and sisters, it is abundantly clear that there is a moral and spiritual darkness everywhere. For when it's not one thing, it's another. When it's not vice, it's iniqui iniquity. When it's not evil, it's corruption. When it's not disease, it's disaster. When it's not depression, it's suppression. When it's not abuse, it's addiction. When it's not blood, it's tears. When it's not racism, it's classism. When it's not terrorism, it's extremism. When it's not bigotry, it's insularity. When it's not incarceration, it's discrimination. When it's not poverty, it's deprivation. When it's not murder, it's mass shooting. When it's not Democrats, it's Republicans. When it's not Donald Trump, it's Donald Trump. When it's not a 5.6 billion war, it's a federal government shutdown. When it's not Stephen King racist rhetoric, it's GM racist graffitis on the wall. When it ain't one thing, it's another. But in spite of the darkness, the darkness around us, God wants us to shine. The first lesson that this passage is tailored to teach us is that we are God's light. We are God's light in this dark world. And we are called and commissioned to help in dispelling the dreadful and distressing darkness around us. From the very historical genesis of our existence, when God formed man from the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and with a kiss of his benediction made him a living soul, the Bible declares that we were fearfully and wonderfully made in the image and the likeness of an awesome God. In other words, we were divinely designed and cosmically created with a divine spark to give light, energy, and power to a dim, dark, and dismal world. In a real sense, the light that God created at that first moment of creation, that same light radiates through us, and we're the channels by which the light is revealed. My brothers and sisters, we don't fully understand how powerful we are, how powerful God made us, and how awesome and magnanimous our God is. There was a, a light commercial, LED light commercial and TV that says that we walk into a room Flip the switch and the light comes on. And we don't even think about the component of electro te technical and mechanical system that is at work. But we enjoy the beautiful 
sparkling, dazzling beauty of the light. But we don't realize how much work it takes to just flip a switch and light comes on. In the same way, we walk through this world without recognizing and appreciating the power and the majesty and the awesomeness of God who in the morning of time stretched his hands from the sleeve of darkness and commanded the universe saying, let there be light. And there was light. Well, light is described by one scientist as a luminous, radiant energy, electro, an electromagnetic radiation to which the organs of sight reacts. And it transmits at a speed of 186,282 miles per second. That's how light is described. But light is more magnanimous and mysterious than that. Light is the radiance of God's beauty, God's love, his grace, his mercy, his truth, and his glory that eliminate, illuminates his people and shines through us. And thank God for that song that found its way into the civil rights movement that Fannie Lou Hamer added to her spiritual collection. It simply says, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I am gonna let it shine. Because in slavery, our four parents knew something about darkness. They lived through 400 years of perpetual, impenetrable darkness. But they also knew that if they would only shine that light, that they would make it. Well, in this passage, Isaiah picked up his prophetic telescope and looked down the ages and saw the universe in absolute darkness. He saw transgression and abomination, corruption and confusion, decay and destitution. He saw injustice and inequality, wickedness and worldliness. Isaiah looked, but Isaiah also looked 700 years down the corridors of time and saw the birth of a Messiah whose name is Jesus. Isaiah said, unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. Isaiah said, the government shall be upon his shoulders, but he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, his government and his peace he will rule with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David for all eternity. Hallelujah. And although the name Jesus was not mentioned in this passage, the theme and thesis of the passage is Jesus. Isaiah saw Jesus as the one who would come to separate the people from moral and spiritual darkness. Isaiah saw a light shining brilliantly in the midst of the darkness. But Jesus himself said, I am the light of the world and no one who believe in me shall stay in darkness, but the light will shine through. Hallelujah. Once read, a little boy was sitting up in church with his mother. And as he looked around at the beauty of the stained glass windows, curiosity got a hold of him. And he asked his mother, who are 
all those people. To which his mother responded, they are saints. And then sensing that this was a teaching moment, she asked, do you know what saints are? He pondered for a moment. Then he responded, they are the people that the light shines through. They are the people the light shines through. Oh, my brothers and sisters, isn't that why we're here today? Isn't it because we are the people that the light shines through? God's people are like stained glass window. We sparkle and shine when the sun is out. But when the darkness sets in, our true beauty is revealed only if there is a light within. That's why we're called the light of the world, city on a hill, life blood of civilization, and God wants every one of us to shine, shine, shine. And God knows just where he wants you to shine. In fact, he has already orchestrated your circumstance and organized the events in your life for you to accomplish the plans and purpose that he has destined for your days. And so one of the first consideration from this passage is if you find yourself in the midst of this cosmic darkness, don't be afraid. When I was a kid, as soon as uh, the night comes down and it gets dark, I wanted to see the light. I was afraid. I was just hang on to my mother. And sometimes, for some reason, she didn't want the light, but I wanted the light. I was afraid. But thank God, in this darkness, we don't have to be afraid because Jesus is shining down. So why don't you just turn to your neighbor one more time and just tell your neighbor, wherever God places you, just shine. Wherever God places you, just shine. See, God has an assignment for each and every one of us. And that's why he grants us favor, lavishes his love, distributes his gift, imparts his inheritance, seal us with his spirit and allow his light to shine on us, in us, through us, around us, and about us. We are children of the light and we're placed here to wrestle and rage against the darkness. There's a light that is within you that is burning bright. It's glittering and it's glorious. There is a light within you that comes straight from the bastions of glory. There's a light within you that needs to be seen. I think for a moment of children in the world that have lost their way and have never been told that they are the light of anybody's world. And it breaks my heart. I think of people who have, were stuck in abusive and dysfunctional relationships, allowing their lights to be crushed. And I want to scream. I think of the millions who have capitulated to carelessness, destroy their bodies, and mess up their minds with abusive substances and are groping in the darkness and it makes me mad. I think of youth who are incarcerated into dark holes of jail cells. Some were never told that they were the light of the world and it makes me sad. So my message in capsule form today is be who you are. Be who you have been created 
and called to be. Be who you are capable of being by the power and the grace of God that is in you. Jesus did not say that we have the potential for shining. In Matthew 5, Jesus sagaciously declared that you are the light of the world. Therefore, our light, which is really his light, is to be reflected by us. Becomes the means of bringing light and beauty to this dark, dreary, and desolate world. I want you to observe from the passage that our light is of an eternal source. And when God made you, you are also given a plan, a purpose, a promise, and potential possibilities so that your light, you can, that you can light and change the world. When Isaac Newton discovered the law of gravity, somebody asked, which is more powerful, light or darkness? And his answer came, light. Because light is always more powerful than darkness. Darkness is the absence of light. And wherever light is, darkness will have to flee. Somebody said all of the darkness in the world cannot blow out one of God's candles. When the light comes in, the darkness gathers up her skirt tail and scatter into the far corners of oblivion. For it is light that dispels, dismisses, diffuses the darkness. Light illuminates everything. Light brings the hidden into view. Notice that God created light before he made humans, before he made animals, before he made vegetation. Light has the ability to enhance, embellish, expose, explain, guide, grow, develop, and direct everything that is placed before it. Light's most drastic quality is that it imparts life, it activates, it quickens. Light is powerful. Philip Brooks, one 18th century theologian says, when the sun rises each morning, it finds the world sleeping in darkness and summon it into action. Then it finds the dull streams and energizes them. It finds the silent birds and bade them sing. The muddy fields and make them grow. Then it saw man in sleep and slumber and bade him to arise and walk saying, you are the light of the world. You are the sign of God's presence in the world. Without light, there can only be catastrophe, chaos, and confusion. If the light refuses to shine, everything would come to a standstill. The stars would vanish. The seas would disappear. The human body would melt into thin air. Your mortal soul would be ushered back into eternity. If in the same way all the Christians should leave the world and cover their lights, then everywhere there would be darkness blacker than a hundred midnight in a Cyprus valley. Without spiritual light, we are conformers to the world. But when the light comes, you are transformed into a new creation. Isaiah said, arise, arise, and shine. Please notice that this is a command. In the Greek, it's called 
the permissive imperative. It is saying, get up. Permit your light to shine. Don't do anything that will contain it, cover it, or compromise it. It is sad that millions of people are living and meddling in the terrible darkness of this world, the darkness of witchcraft, the darkness of alcohol, addiction, drugs, abuse, laziness, drunkenness, iniquity. Everywhere there is darkness. Many are living contrary to the word of God. They feel that there's nothing wrong and there's nothing sinful. Everything is situational. This is the age when right has become wrong and wrong is right. When good is bad and bad is good. Even those of us who profess to be children of the light have allowed the stifling, suffocating, suppressing bushels of worldliness to overcome and overshadow us. But the civil rights leader Martin Luther King said, every man must decide whether he will walk in the light of creative altruism or in the darkness of destructive selfishness. Thank God for Martin Luther King who walked in the light, who shunned the light. This is why we're celebrating MLK Day. He was a jumbie for justice, for brotherhood, for peace. He broke down the manacles of racism and discrimination. Thank God for Martin. He left an example for us, just like Jesus, to walk in the light. We must walk in the light my brothers and sisters, live in the light. We must give the light because we are light and we must preach Jesus even in the darkness. A revival preacher was preaching in the south just at the end of slavery. When he got to the climax of his very powerful sermon, the lights went out. He was a manuscript preacher, and it became pitch black. Suddenly, the sermon fell flat. And he said, my brothers and sisters, I can't make it. He stopped preaching. But one of the deacons shout from the back of the church, preach on, preacher. Preach on. We can see Jesus in the dark. Oh, thank God we can see Jesus in the dark. In the dark, we must keep on shining. For in this dark world, there is work for us to do. There are values to inculcate, sinners to indoctrinate, skeptics to educate, falsehood to illuminate, addiction to rehabilitate addicts, to rehabilitate souls, to liberate injustice, to litigate children, to situate, and a whole new world to regenerate. Notice Jesus did not say, you are to be the light of the church. When you come to church on Sabbath morning, turn on your light. When you come to church, just uh, let everyone see how perfect and pristine, pious and sanctimonious you are. When you come to church, turn on your religious energies. No. Jesus said, when you leave the church and you drive out of the parking lot and into the neighborhood and into your school, into your classroom, at your workplace, and into the factories and the offices and the grocery store, you must shine for Jesus. Because you, 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 you are the light of the world. Let the world see 
your light and come to know Jesus. Your Christianity is to be visible. Your Christianity must be noticed. People are to know that you're a Christian by what you say, what you do, and who you are. If you're a Christian, you cannot hide it. It is the very nature of Christians, of discipleship, to be seen. There is no such thing as a secret Christian or a closet Christian or a bushel covered Christian. Gotta be on the hill. You gotta shine. Also understand that light does not call attention to itself. It points the way through the darkness and spotlights the path or object it wants others to see. That is why Jesus said, let your light shine before men. There is a warning against isolationism and individualism. The Lord wants us to make contact with the world, to change the world. And when you make the contact, the text goes on to say, glorify God, which is in heaven. This is not about you. This is not about your glory. Not about your super ego. It's not about your self-interest, self-glory, self-aggrandizement or self-congratulatory ego trip or ego party. All the glory. Tell somebody, tell somebody all the glory. All the glory must go to the Lord. Hallelujah, all the glory must go straight to the Lord. Like the song says, for your glory, I will do anything, Lord. Just to see you, to behold you as my king. And Maybe, just maybe, I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody came here this morning. You got some darkness going on in your life. It's so dark that you can't see God's providential possibilities for your life. It's so dark that you can't see your way. It's so dark that you can't see the hands of God or the blessing of God. It is so dark that your night is dark and your day is dark. Today I give you Jesus who will illuminate your life and cause you to shine. For Isaiah says, shine, arise and shine. For your light is come and the glory of light is come. The Lord is risen upon you. Hallelujah. He came like a stranger, born in a manger, slept on hay, baptized in the muddy Jordan, rejected by his race, hated for being the light of the world. But Matthew says, the people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. John said, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. David says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Peter says, but you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a special people called out of darkness into this marvelous light. Hallelujah. Let me bring this home. My brothers and sisters, we got to shine that light. We cannot, don't hide it, shine it. Don't hide it, tell it. Don't hide it, talk about it. Don't hide it because, hallelujah, Jesus is the light of the world. Martin Luther King didn't hide it and brought reformation to a church. Abraham Lincoln didn't hide it and wrote the Emancipation Proclamation. Ellen White didn't hide it and became the prophetic voice of the church. John Bunyan didn't hide it and gave us the Pilgrim Progress. Martin Luther King Jr. didn't hide it 
and change the course of America. Rosa Parks didn't hide it and remain seated on a bus. Harriet Tugman didn't hide it and made an underground railroad up to Canada. Helen Kayla didn't hide it and gave the world the world life and power. Beethoven didn't hide it but gave us the Ninth Symphony. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't hide it and they kissed the flame away from the forest furnace. Daniel didn't hide it and prayed until he gave the lions a lap jaw. Paul didn't hide it and said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where's the musician? For it is the power of God unto salvation. Job didn't hide it. And Job said, I know that my Redeemer liveth. Oh, hallelujah. And that ye shall stand in the latter day. My brothers and sisters, young people, don't hide it. Shine it. Don't hide it. Preach it. Don't hide it. Sing about it. Don't hide it. Talk about it. Don't hide it. Testify that Jesus, that Jesus, as a Jesus, is the light of the world. Hallelujah. Oh, I want to praise him. Oh, I want to thank him. I want to lift him up. I found myself in darkness many times, but Jesus came to my rescue. Jesus took me out of the darkness and he placed me in the light. And I just want to testify today that here I am to worship. And here am I to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful. Hallelujah. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Is God a good God? Would you just put your hands together and celebrate the goodness and the awesomeness of a mighty God. Hallelujah. The praise team is going to sing for me. All together, lovely. Hallelujah. Why don't we all just stand and celebrate this song as we praise God who is the light, who made us light, and who has allowed us to shine in this world. Amen. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely. All together together worthy all together wonderful 
is all together lovely. I want you to leave here today knowing that there's a prince of darkness. His name is Satan. He will always try to discourage and defeat you. He will blow out your light if you allow him. He'll leave you staggering in the dark. And many of us, so many of us, sometimes we are so discouraged. We feel defeated. We feel that because of the difficulties and the, the darkness that we find ourselves in, we ain't going to make it. But I want you to know today that you're going to make it. I said you're going to make it. Turn to your neighbor tell your neighbor you're going to make it. It may be dark, but that's all right. There is a light that will lead you. Hallelujah. Praise God. What a wonderful God we serve. Would you raise your hand to heaven today? Do you want God to be the light in your life and to be the one that will lighten your path? The one who is your light and salvation. Let us pray, wonderful loving God. In the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We lift our hands towards heaven because we're indicating that you alone can remove the darkness from around us and cause us to shine like the sun. Father God, I pray that you will help each and every one of us wherever we go, by our attitude, the words that comes out of our mouth, everything about us, we will shine that light that men will come and will glorify you. Oh, Father God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us of our sins. Keep us safe, Lord. Lord, we pray that in our troubles and our trials and our tribulations, we pray that you will just come, take over, and save us. We need you, God. We need you. We need some light in our, in our lives so that we can shine. We thank you, we praise you, we bless you from the, for these moments of worship. We lift you up. And we look towards the day when you shall come. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.